my, my dad was in real estate, my mom actually was even in real estate, and I got my license at 19 years old. And I had managed an A&W restaurant in my high school years. <coughs> And this, I'm from a resort town in Michigan, Point City, Michigan, if anybody's familiar with Michigan. And this restaurant sat right on the lake shore, going, real going concern. And this guy decided he was going to sell the real estate and the business. 1971, $350,000, 10% commission. Everybody in town is trying to get the listing, obviously. I had hair about to hear. <laughs> yeah, he really did. <laughs> and every morning when he arrived, I was sitting there waiting for him. And every night when he locked up, I was sitting there waiting for him. And after about two weeks of this, he said, Jim, I'll give you a listing for 30 days and just go away and never, ever bug me again. I says, you know what? I'll take it. And so I got five minutes later, I'm down the street. I order a Coke. I sit down at the counter where my future ex-wife was working. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> um, and so uh, I sit at the counter, her boss sits down next to me, and he, and he says, how you doing, Jim? I said, I just listed A&W. He says, well, my cousin's arriving tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock to buy it. <laughs> Less than 24 hours later, I had a full price double ended offer, 1971, $350,000, 10%, and it gets better. That same week, I listed a custom home, and the guy bought the A&W bought the home. <laughs> so I did literally half a million dollars in my first month in business in 1971. And, uh, and I, I always tell everybody I'm one of the luckiest people I ever had was ever in real estate. I work hard, but I'm also very lucky. You looking for my notes, Scott? And, uh, Does it start with your future ex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the other night, um, Ginger's birthday was Saturday, and we had a little family, uh, little family party at the house. And my son Matthew, some of you may know him. Um, he's uh, came into the business about a year ago. He's learning it. And uh, his girlfriend, straight out of Paris, she's been in this country just two years now, straight out of Paris, went into real estate a year ago. She did 180 sales this year. First year. And so we're talking. We're going, you know, why are you bucking the trends? Why are you doing so well? Why are so many of our realtors doing so well when all you ever hear in this industry is boom and doom? Why is Allison James doing so well? You know, it's passion. And that's what it is. It's passion. You know, if you don't have passion for life, if you don't have passion for your work, if you don't have passion for your spouse, you just don't have it. And I really, really, truly believe that's why we're growing. Um, because in our corporate office, it, it, it is passion. I mean, my, my son tells me on a constant basis that he's going to put on my tombstone, how many realtors did you recruit today? Uh, <laughs> I mean, and he's serious about that. Because it is passion. We have to grow. Um, I've been in real estate forever. 40 years, and I had a very strong beginning. Uh, my dad passed away at a young age, I was actually working with him, and moved to Colorado, and in Colorado I went to work for Century 21. And in, at Century 21, um, one day I was sitting there at my desk with my buddy, and uh, in fact I had dinner with him last night, and uh, I told him, I said, someday I'm going to have a real estate company called Allison James Estates and Homes. That was 1980, and uh, it happened, it happened. And uh, I just liked the name. I, I had, over the years, created a logo for it. And uh, so that's really how Allison James came to be. Uh, funny thing is, is I was the top listing agent in the state for Century 21 back then. Um, I was every broker's um, prima donna nightmare. Um, I was horrible. Uh, I was one of those 20-year-olds that, uh, you know, I actually really believed I, in real estate, I walked on water. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was horrible. Um, and uh, Remax tried to hire me. And at the time, Remax had like 7,000 realtors. And uh, so that's why I followed them. And that book, Everybody Wins, 
And Scott, I believe you've read it now, mm -hmm. haven't you? I know, I know Ken has. I swear every day when I read that book, I'm reading about what's happening to us. Do you know that we right now have grown every year so far at four times the pace they did? Four times the pace. I mean, we have doubled every year. If we double this year, Ginger's probably going to have a breakdown, but, <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's our next hire, is somebody to help Ginger, trust me, uh, because she is, she is absolutely smart. We have literally, literally with zero advertising buildings. We're now in 14 states. We're licensed in, uh, we're, we're licensed in a total of 17, I believe, but we're operational in 14. And it's just booming. Virginia all of a sudden has absolutely caught on fire. I don't know what happened in Virginia, but it is just, it, it's, it's, it's blowing the competition away. I mean, they're just expanding out there. Uh, New Mexico's growing, California's growing, Florida's growing, uh, in, in, in all over. A lot of our brokers are now, are all getting these websites, and that, that's helping. So we're, we're just continuing to grow. Last May, I got a call from Steve Murray, Real Trends. Is anybody familiar with Real Trends? I get a call from Steve Murray, okay, and he he proudly says he has helped build companies such as Keller Williams. Because if he invites them in to speak at this group, he says, you know, unless you really make a mistake, something big's going to happen. Well, he called me up. He said, Jim, I'd like you to attend the Gathering of Eagles. The Gathering of Eagles, they only invite 250 of the top CEOs in the country in the, our industry. And I was in Dallas last May, and I said, Pricey. I said, Steve, I, I really don't know. You know we're, we're, we're working. I don't know if I really can do this. He said, no, you don't understand. I want you to speak at it. I went, well, okay. I guess I can't pass up this opportunity. He says, the first day of the meeting, we have an even more exclusive meeting. It's called the Billionaires Club. He says, that is the meeting I want you to speak to. I have never been nervous speaking in front of a crowd in my life. My hands were dripping water sitting there before this speech. He comes up to me just before I'm going to go on. He said, Jim, don't worry about this crowd. They're just going to rip out your liver and fry it. <laughs> and, uh, but then he comes right back to me and says, however, we decided to put you on the end rather than in the beginning. Of this. And, 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 I, and so by the time he got to me, I was comfortable because <coughs> Everything we're talking about is everything we all talk about every day. You know, these guys put on their pants one at a time, one leg at a time too. And and it's been fun because I, I now know Mark Willis, the CEO of Keller, Keller Williams personally. I mean, we exchange emails all the time, pushing each other's buttons on how many people we hired that day. Um, I know Alex Barello, the CEO of Reology, on Cola Banger, since 20 Yuri, and all those. You know, I've gotten to know these guys. In fact, I've had private breakfasts with them. Uh, Mark flew me into Austin. So I've gotten to know them. But I was so comfortable when I got up to give that speech, I, I just threw my speech out. And I walked up, and it was getting late. It was late in the day, going on five. I said, you know, guys, I'm glad it's cocktail hour. Because I'm about to boot your tree cheese and drive you to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, everything kind of exploded on us. And they have flown me in. They have flown in to see me. They have flown me in. They're all talking to me. They all go, we're stuck, Jim. We can't do anything. We're stuck. You know, we can't We can't do away with our franchise fees. Okay? So we can never pay 100% because we can't do away with those franchise fees or we lose our franchisees. It says we can't, our franchisees are going around brick and mortar. It says we're in trouble. We are in trouble. This comes from the guys. Alex Perillo himself, Alex Perillo himself said to me, you know what, you're going to have 400,000 people in this business model, maybe not hey, I'll just say Alex and James, in this business model in the next 10 years, 400,000 realtors. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in, in, in Mark Willis's office in Austin, and I said, well, Mark, what do you think your figure is? He says, well, at the bare minimum, there's 5% of all the realtors. Bare minimum, that's 50,000. So they all know this is the future. Every single one of them knows you can now operate after three years. Well, what Scott's math is two years, I don't know. But after three years, we have proven that you can operate a national real estate brokerage virtually. You can do it. 
I mean, we, we, come, we, we accumulate all that data in a central spot in Florida, and we manage the entire country from that spot. Yes, our programs, our back office could get better. We work on that. We spend $1,000 a month improving that back office because we will improve it. We want to get to the point where it is a barcode on the bottom of every form so you can just st stick 50 sheets into your scanner and walk away and it's sorted. That's where we're going. Now Ken knows we're going there because we talk to him all the time. It's probably another year away. Uh, that stuff, believe me, IT drives me crazy. Um, it, it's, it, I want something today and they said, well, two months ago, why? And um, so, but we'll get there. We will get there. We will have that where you just stick all 50 sheets and something in, they'll scan, they'll be sorted, they'll be stored, and it's done for you. My philosophy, Brella's philosophy, Ginger's philosophy, everybody's philosophy in the company is you are our customer. You are our customer. We are there for you. This is different. We are not a real estate brokerage. I say that all the time. We, Alice and James is not a real estate brokerage. We are a realtor company. We are there for the realtors. Our realtors are in the real estate business. And we are there to do everything we can to make your life easier, to make you more money, and to support you. That is what our dedication. All those years I built all those companies. My one philosophy, the reason so many top producers came to work for me and stayed with me is because I believe if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> okay? And it was that simple. And that's how I ended up buying Prudential in Florida. I looked for the weakest manager I could find when I got to town. But because I was just going to go back to selling real estate. I wanted a weak manager because I, I knew what I was doing. I wanted to be left alone to run my business as my business. And I found such a weak manager that three months later I owned the company. And um, I mean, that's how bad it was. But, but truly, we are there when you need us. Okay? We are not there when you don't need us. We are not a dictator. We don't expect you to come into office and explain to us why you didn't make more sales that month or have more listings that month. And every one of us have been there. Okay? That is not our philosophy. We are there for your support. We do believe. Our goal in five years, our goal is to have a minimum of 10,000 delivery nationwide. That is our goal within the next five years. Ginger won't let me have my new boat until we get there. Um, so some of the things we've done is we've got nat uh, title now is official national. <clears throat> added in Florida. We don't have all the details today because Robert's sick. And uh, we don't have all the details how we're going to roll it out to you, but watch for the emails. We will have a title for everybody, Alice and James title. We will have homeowners probably within the next 60 days. We have homeowners in Florida, but we will have it in California within the next 60 days. So we're trying to make it a one-stop virtual shop for you. So all you have to do is sooner or later we're going to have all that IT working where it's just a click of a button and everything works for you. We want everything fillable, everything easy to be done for you. We will get there. Bear with us. I blame this on Scott. I really do. Um, how this company really started was I sold my credentials five years ago, and I had a non-compete south of I-4 in Florida. If you're familiar with Florida, that's literally the whole southern half of Florida. And they kept... They kept Ginger and I, we were supposed to stay on for two years for the transition. After two months, they sent me home and said, we'll continue to pay you to stay away. Um, I'm not a good employee. And, uh, <laughs> and so they paid me. But Ginger was still working, but I was bored out of my mind. If Ginger, if Ginger would have retired, we might have retired. Instead, I started this. And, um, and so anyway, I, I come up with this, this, this concept. And I figured, well, you know what? I'll hire 100 realtors in the Tampa area. I'll work out of my home office, and I have a nice little income. Ginger and I can manage 100 realtors pretty easy. We've both been doing it for years and years and years. And uh, that was the whole concept. Next thing I know, I've got 14 states. I mean, this was not, guys, this was not planned. I mean, so sometimes it's just the perfect product at the perfect time 
<coughs> and in this case, in a perfect economic environment. Those realtors that are still making money have come to the realization they no longer need to share 40, 50%, 30% with the broker. They don't have to do it. I mean, I get emails on a continuous basis that, you know what I did with that extra money that we saved? I put my daughter in a private school. I bought two new cars. Okay. I went on a, what did you buy, Lisa? <laughs> I, I, I went on a vacation. And we get those every day. You know, it used to be, you gave that 30% or that 40% to your broker, and they bought the new car. Yeah, they paid for the building. They went on the vacation. Their kids were in the private school. No more. People and people every day says, how do you make money, Jim? I said, it's real simple, it's volume. And it's, it's obviously volume is how we do it. But we will always be able to manage. We can, our current system could handle 5,000 of them, okay? And we will always improve and add and add and add as we grow. So. With that, I will open it up to some questions. Uh, we're way ahead of time today, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't keep everybody lying off. People hate me. Does anybody have any questions? How do you see the future with uh, uh, maybe regional brokers everywhere in the nation? Or the um, Jim, can you repeat the question for us, please? Yes. The, the question was, uh, where do we see it with regional brokers? <laughs> in the, there are states where we'll never have regional brokers. In, in this system. The way it works for our brokers in this business model is it's more like owning an insurance company. And what I mean by that is you're not going to make a lot of money as a broker if you have 20 or 30 or 40 people because you get a piece, a piece of what we get each month, but it's an annuity. Every time you add somebody, it keeps adding up. So it's just like an insurance company. Big insurance guys that make lots of money, they have a thousand customers. In this case, it'd be a thousand realtors. Okay, or 500 realtors or 200 realtors. So in some states, we will never have regions, um, just because there's not that many realtors. Believe it or not, there are states that have less than 1,000 realtors. I know that's hard to believe, but there are. Um, North Dakota, places like that, they just, they just don't have many. But in the larger states, we will have lots of regionals, probably. Texas, uh, California, Florida, New York, Ohio, Illinois, Place like that, Michigan, we will have lots of regions. Uh, but we, we, it's important that our brokers make money as well, okay? Because we are not going to dilute it for our brokers because we, we like our brokers. The one thing I like right now about our brokerage staff is they're keeping us legal. They are really, really, really good at that, and, and I like that. Because I know nationally we will be tested by some state sooner or later, how good is your compliance? And I know that's coming. So we want total, total, total compliance. Uh, we really, really don't tolerate much shenanigans. Uh, we, we let a realtor go yesterday in Florida. Um, Ken and I had a discussion about somebody this morning. I mean, we just, we have to have total compliance. We want, we are, positioning ourselves as the remax of the virtual real estate brokerages. That means we need pros, we need people to do it right, we want everybody to do it right. So we want our brokers to make lots of money. And we will we will always judge our regionals based on that. Any other questions? Yes. You mentioned <clears throat> earlier that the Virginia area is really growing. Are you talking about the northern Virginia? Area or? Scott, could you repeat that? Yeah, uh, comment was that you made you had stated that Virginia was one of our fastest growing areas. Uh, where in the state is that? Um, the Hampton Roads area. Um, we Southeast. in that whole group right there. We are now in Washington D.C., Maryland, Virginia, that whole area, uh, and it's just starting to really explode on us. Um, I think we've hired uh, 20 realtors in the last month just in that area. Um, Believe it or not, they have a higher price point than you guys do. Really? Yeah. 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 We're, our, our average in there is 450. That's it. In that area. 
The Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C., it's a really hot area. Yes. I think a year ago I expressed an interest in the Northern Virginia area only because I grew up there. I have friends, relatives, so I know it's a really hot area. <coughs> but when I contact Tracy, he only concentrates on the Southern Virginia. Most of that real estate activity is Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C. Yeah, we've, really uh, we've actually got, don't quote me on this, <laughs> uh, but I believe we do have another broker in that area. We have June that's in Washington, D.C., Maryland, but I believe we have another broker now in that in the, that part of Maryland, I believe. Um, check with Ginger or Matthew on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, we do. I know we do. Because I, I know, know I would have to join another broker if I want to do anything, so and I didn't want to well, do that. Well, now, if you are in two states, here's the beauty of people that are in two states. If you are in two states, we still only charge one fee, your license. We just split that between the brokers. So, because there's a lot of places where people are in two states, up on the border, on the river in Oregon there in two states, a lot of California realtors have Nevada licenses and we will be in Nevada. Um, we did shut down for some of you that have asked. We, in the beginning, uh, would choose a broker if they could fog up a piece of glass uh, we made some errors. We have gotten rid of some brokers and closed some states. We had a broker in Nevada that actually $20,000 later in federal court we got rid of. <clears throat> so we made some mistakes. Now we're very, very strict on our brokers. Um, so it's, it's, it's changing. We're evolving. There was no blueprint for this business model. I mean, I have made my share of mistakes, trust me. There was no blueprints. I mean, I couldn't pick up a book and go, like a potential franchise, and go, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, this is what, there was just no blueprint. And so we have made our fair share of um, stock can verify that <laughs> mistakes <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, but most of them are behind us at this point, and uh, we've got good growth now. We've got healthy growth. I mean, last, we have doubled every year that we've been in business. We expect to double this year. Last year, we closed almost 2,400 sales for almost half a billion dollars. So if we're a third year company, that is just phenomenal numbers. I mean, when I put that out, Alex picked up the phone and called me, Alex Perlow, CEO of Rheology, and says, gotcha, that's insane. Ken. The, the, really, the really big number is the average number of transactions yeah, per yeah. agent. That's, that's really true. Every one of you that looks at Realtor Magazine, you know, Remax has that big cover, that big ad in there, what the average number of sales is for every company, Cola Banker, Keller Williams, Century 21, all those credential. Well, God, we, we blown, we've blown them all out the door. The only one ahead of us, and they aren't ahead of us by much, is Remax. Um, our average realtor last year did, I, I say nine sales, but it was closer to 10, like 9.8 sales last year for the year. I mean, that is a phenomenal number. Um, so. We really are attracting some heavy, heavy, and we're getting some heavy, heavy hitters. I mean, everybody knows who knows Mark, but we've got some people coming out in some other areas that are just phenomenal. Um, you know, when I when we did the 1099s this year, I was just shocked at some of the money some of the people made. I mean, just stunned. And uh, so there's some serious money still being made out there. Any uh, other questions? None? In that case, I think Ken's going to wrap this up, Scott. Ken, why don't you come on up? <laughs> I want to thank all of you for coming out. We don't like, like to keep meetings nice and short, um, but I really, really appreciate you all coming out and for all your support. And keep sending those realtors to Ginger. She hasn't divorced me yet, so keep sending them. I'll, I'll know when she hits the wall, and I'll let you know. Uh, so. Yeah, but she's the, the bourbon bottle's still not empty, so <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody.